Okay, so let's talk about our next technique, which is basically the use of secondary function chords or secondary dominance. So for me to do this, we're going to have to switch the map over from where it is now in the basic diatonic form up a few notches to where it says secondary dominance. Before I do that, let's talk about this. Keep this mental snapshot of what the map is in your mind now and how it works. You basically have your tonic region, your subdominant region, and your dominant region. Because when I hit this button here, you're going to see a bunch of those. Boom, right? So now let, let me draw your attention to where the four chord is. Now the four chord has its own little subset now. You have now treating the four chord like it's the tonic. And over here is F's subdominant region. And next to that to the right is F's dominant region. And then I'm back on that. It would just be like if I was in the key of F in the basic diatonic form. Minus seven, C, F. Let me go back to C, turn the secondary dominance on, and you'll see that exact sub map within our main map now superimposed over there. So when you have your secondary dominance on, you're basically just seeing a bunch of little mini maps within the main map that you have. So this is going to allow you to start reharmonizing, and in order to do so, you got to kind of think of your target where you're going. So if I want to before we had this, right? We had C, F, G, F. If I want to draw more importance to that F, I want to make that F more significant than it was. If I want to kind of recalibrate the listener's ear to make F uh, have more weight or more importance, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to select my secondary dominant function, and instead of going C, F, G, C, let's just forget C because it doesn't really matter where we're starting as we approach F because all we're thinking about is how to approach F. I'll use C anyways, but we could just as easily leave it, leave it out. So I'm going to go C, and instead of directly to F, I'm going to go to G minor 7, and then C7, F. So I basically have now kind of made F, or the arrival to F, more significant or more important. All right, we're not just going from F to G to C. We're getting to F. First, we're thinking about arriving at F and then going to G and then going to C or doing what we did in the previous video. So if I do this, the 2 of 4, the 5 of 4, the 4, and then go to G7 sus, G, C. Now I'm using our uh, secondary dominant technique in conjunction with our 164 cadential technique that we talked about before. Or I could just use one or the other if I want. I don't have to use both. Remember, like we said last time, like don't try to paint yourself into a corner. Don't think about these rules as have to follow, but want to if it sounds good. All right? These are just ideas. These are just colors on your palette, and you can choose how you want to use them however you want. But these are the certain tendencies that go along with using these colors, if you will. Um, so let's do, let's do that one more time. Let's go from C, F, G, see our, our original cadence and let's do it like this now we're going to approach the F from its secondary dominance and then go over to the cadential 6-4 chords before getting back to C so now we have this right instead of just you know We have all these different ways of anticipating certain chords or arriving to them or delaying the arrival of one chord to another through the use of the map and the secondary dominant chords within the map. So you'll notice our basic map and the C and the F and the D minor 7 and the G now with the secondary dominant function all, all have their own little sub maps superimposed on top of them. All right, Different ways of getting to that chord instead of going directly to it. So there's technique four, the use of secondary dominance and thinking of the target, thinking of where you're going as a way of using those secondary dominance.